So this is the Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Carbon 9th Gen. Very long name, but a very popular laptop in the business world. And I was gonna straight up review this by itself, but I reviewed the X1 Nano about a week ago, and this, compared to that, it, it makes a lot of sense. Like these two laptops are so similar in a ton of ways. They both have that ThinkPad look and feel, and the price is different. One is $700 cheaper than the other. So you might be asking yourself if you need to pay extra or not by the end of this video. If you look at them, you can see the same kind of design philosophy. They're both mill STD tested. They can withstand spills on the keyboard. They're, they're, they're really light, 2.15 pounds for the Nano compared to 2.49 on the Carbon. If you're holding them, you can feel the difference, but quite frankly, 2.49 pounds is so light to begin with that I think most people won't complain about the weight. But the Nano is meant for, for hardcore travel warriors, right? You're, you're trying to pack as light as possible, and, and that's what the Nano is for, because even though it's lighter, it's, it's just a smaller laptop. Like when you put it on top of the carbon, you can see that the laptop is not as deep and not as wide. Now this is the black model, but you can also get the Nano with a weave, and the black model tends to show fingerprints a lot easier compared to the weave, which shows it too, but it's not as drastic. Now the one thing you're giving up with the Nano is ports. You only get two Thunderbolt 4 ports on the left-hand side, so for some of you out there, that might mean carrying dongles with you. The Carbon, on the other hand, has all the ports you can think of. Two Thunderbolt 4, you have your USB port, full-size HDMI, and then when you flip it to the other side, you have another USB port and your headphone jack. The other big difference is the keyboard deck. There's just a lot more space to work with on the Carbon. The Nano is just a little bit more cramped due to its smaller form factor. The typing experience is identical. I didn't find typing on one easier over the other, but the touchpad is the main difference. Like you just get a lot more space to move your fingers around on the Carbon. But here's the funny thing. Even though you get more space on the Carbon, I found the touchpad on the Nano to be a lot more enjoyable to use. One thing I found about Lenovo ThinkPads in general is that the consistency of the touchpads vary from unit to unit. It's never exactly the same. Some just happen to be a bit better. Is it a big deal? Is it drastic? Is it gonna ruin the way you use your laptop? Absolutely not. Just something I noticed after years and years of reviewing ThinkPads. The other thing is the fingerprint scanner. This is right beside the touchpad on the Nano, whereas on the Carbon, it's embedded into the power button. Speakers are both on top of the deck, but you have more speakers with the Carbon and therefore you do get better sound just because there's more room to work with. Now both of these laptops can have their screen flipped 180 degrees, they both support Windows Hello, and they both have 720p webcams. The webcams are nothing special, but they're there. The other thing to note is Lenovo's smart presence technology. So when you approach any of these laptops, it detects that you're there and then scans your face and logs you in. And the moment you go away from the laptop, it will detect that you left and automatically lock your screen in in case you forgot to. The displays are a bit different. They're, they're both 16 by 10, the difference is that this one happens to be 14 inches and this is 13. Quite frankly, I feel like I'm working on a bigger display than a 13 inch display because of that aspect ratio. And same holds true for the bigger carbon. The difference in color accuracy really comes down to the SKU that you decide to buy. Like this one, you can buy it with a 1900 or 1920 by 1200 display, but this one happens to be 4K. And you're just getting a lot more brightness, more color gamut to work with if you're really into design. This doesn't have such a crazy color gamut compared to the carbon, but it's still really good. And the fact that this one's matte gives you less reflection if you're outdoors a lot. Now they did a pretty good job of reducing the reflection on this glossy display, and it's significantly less than let's say the Surface laptop, but again, because you have a glossy display, there's gonna be a bit of reflection. Now both of these laptops are using an i7 processor and they're both 11th gen, but there is a difference. One is using a 1160G7, and the other is a 1165G7. Thank you, Intel, for making this very confusing. What the 0G7 means is that the X1 Nano is using a lower TDP of that i7 processor. This one is like a 15 watt processor, whereas this one can go up to 30 watts, which means the Carbon is technically going to give you better performance. The funny thing, though, is all the tests I ran, the Carbon did perform better, but it wasn't like drastic. You know, like take this Mozilla compile time. Yes, it compiled faster on the Carbon, but it wasn't by much. 
if you're an editor or a designer and you're buying these for Photoshop and you're doing meetings and stuff like that, again, the carbon is gonna be the better option, but it's not drastic. And if you're a video editor looking for something light and portable, these are not it. You usually want something with a dedicated GPU. But the beauty of using an Intel laptop with that Iris XE graphics chip and QuickSync, if you're using Adobe Premiere Pro, you can still edit a video. Like you can still do it. I just don't recommend doing it all the time. And again, it's gonna be faster on the carbon. The other thing to note is that these things can be pushed harder. But Lenovo, aiming these laptops towards business users, want to make sure the fan noise is low. That's why when these things are under full load, you can hear the fans, but they're not loud. They're around like 43 decibels. Heat management is also going to be good because the fan noise needs to stay low. So they're gonna power limit the CPUs so that the, the heat doesn't get too hot and the fans don't get too loud. Internally, the only thing that is upgradable is the NVMe SSD. The RAM is completely soldered onto the motherboard. The other difference is the fan layout. You get one big fan with the Nano, which makes sense considering this is a 15 watt CPU. You don't really need two for it. And on the Carbon, you have two fans since it has a higher TDP. The other thing to note is the drive setup. This is using a 2280 NVMe SSD and nets you higher read and write speeds. The smaller NVMe SSD inside of here is still fast, but not as fast as the carbon. The battery is bigger in the carbon, 57 watt hours compared to 47. But here's the thing, I actually got better battery life on the X1 Nano, probably most likely due to the fact that this is not using a 4K display and this is a 13 inch display instead of 14 inches. So here's the thing, on paper, the carbon 9th gen makes more sense. You're getting a slightly faster computer. You're getting more ports to work with. You're getting a better sound. You're getting a bigger keyboard deck, a much bigger touchpad to work with, and you're getting the option of a bigger display but it costs anywhere from five to $700 more, if you go with the 4K model, over the X1 Nano. And if the performance was significantly better, then I would say it might be worth it. But the performance difference between both of these guys are not that drastic. And the X1 Nano is already getting you 90 to 95% there. I didn't find like I was missing much when I was using the X1 Nano. Like I didn't find like I needed to go back to the carbon. And if you're an IT administrator who's going from office or to office or will be in the near future, then I think you're gonna have a lot more fun with the Nano because most people buying these business laptops, they're not like doing 3D work and compiling code for 10 hours straight. They're using Excel, they're, they're writing documents, they're remoting into their company's infrastructure to manage it. And I think with the better battery life on the Nano, you might find this to be the better option. Now, if you're interested in picking any of these guys up, there'll be links to it in the description down below. If you have any more questions, let me know. Like the video if you liked it, subscribe, if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next one.